So we talked about value, and we talked about reputation, and now we're going to talk about transparency. Now, I say transparency because it's, uh, it's more of a, a pop word going around right now uh, in the term of uh, corporate transparency. But it's really a proxy. Right? Transparency is a proxy for reputation. Sorry, tr transparency is a proxy for trust. That's what people are talking about. See, people want transparency in a person or a business because they want to be able to see inside of the business. And what is it that they want to see? What they want to see is how does that company make decisions? How do they make decisions? How do they choose to do one thing over another? How do they treat their employees? How is it that they actually treat their past clients? They want to see more of the inner workings of the company. And the only reason you actually want to see those things is that you want to know how can you, pre how can you predict how this company might behave in future circumstances. You're trying to predict how they might behave in future circumstances. This is trust. That's what it is to trust someone. Can I trust that this person has interests future interests that are in line with what I have. And if they are, then you have no problem following along with them. But if you find out that the, the, the person does something completely different than what it is that you would want them to do, then what you're actually finding out is that your interests are not aligned. See, the, it's an interesting thing. If you have a similar goal, then no matter what behavior another person exhibits or another entity exhibits, if you know that they have they share the same end goal, well, you're not nearly as upset or have any problem with it um, as if they had a different goal and you there was a misconception. You thought they're you're going to the same place. It actually turns into this like betrayal. I can't believe this company did this to me. I can't believe this entrepreneur did this to me. So, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that you need to know what is the guiding principle, the guiding light for your business. You need to know what it is that you would sacrifice anything for. You would sacrifice anything for. And that's usually the problem, that you're, you're trying to solve this problem using this product, service, or information. You're trying to solve this problem. And if that is, let's say that is your guiding light, that is the, re the reason you're doing this is that this problem means so much to you, right? You want to solve this problem. And if other people know that this means so much to you, then they'll be accepting of all kinds of things that your, that your company does. I mean, Elon Musk is a classic example of this. Uh, my, my brother, uh, Peter, he talks about Elon Musk all the time. Elon Musk! Yeah, he loves him. Because Elon Musk is nothing but clear about what his intentions are, right? Elon Musk puts his money where his mouth is. Elon Musk talks about it uh, constantly. He's very transparent of what he's doing. And say what you will about what you think about his business practices. He, is, he wants to go to Mars. He wants to build electric cars. He wants to dig tunnels under, under cities. He wants, he wants to he build PayPal. He wants... He is very clear about what he's going to do and what are the definitions of his success. So anyone who works with him doesn't have to doubt if what he's doing is in line with what they're doing. They know we're going to the same place. They might disagree. They might have some problems with how he goes about it, but you can't deny, you can't say that you don't trust Elon Musk. You want to be like that. You want to be a entrepreneur who's so focused uh, you, have so focused, you have this guiding principle that's so clear that anyone who does any business with you at all knows for sure this person is, is going to behave in this way for this, um, uh, for this end because I know what their goals are. Now, here's the interesting thing. It doesn't matter if your ultimate aim is to make as much money as possible or to gain as much power as possible or any sort of nefarious goal that, that, you, uh, that anyone might, might choose because as long as it's clear, people are fine with it. You can have, uh, there are all kinds of hedge funds and wealth man management firms, and their goal is to make as much money as possible. That's what they're trying to do. And so you're not going with them because you think they're trying to heal the world. You're going with them because that's what they're trying to do. Okay, and if you have that same interest, if you're aligned, then you know what they're, you know they're going to do. If you're uh, trying to buy, if you're buying a product, you're trying to uh, buy a product, and you want to get the cheapest product possible. You don't really care about getting the high-end one or the mid-tier one. You want the cheapest one, uh, one as possible because either that's your budget or you just want to try out the idea. Then... You don't care how much the company cuts corners because your goal was to, to get the cheapest one possible. And if their custom, customer service sucks, well, you're not going to be upset about that. You'll be like, well, how can it not suck? The thing is, th is $13. Of course it's going to be terrible. Like, why would they spend any extra money trying to make sure that I'm happy? And you won't feel hurt about that. You're like, okay, that's the cost of doing it. But 
if the company implies, or either explicitly or implicitly, that their guiding principle is one thing, and as you interact with them, you find that it's actually something else, oh, oh, big problems. Is that like when I call customer service and they're like, yes, sir, we really want to help you with your problem or whatever, and then what they really want to do is like upsell me on, on some other thing? That's exactly right. Exactly right. Now, it hurts more when you, you feel like you've been wronged by the company. But it also, um, like, something doesn't go well. You call customer service because something's broken. It turns out they're just reading from a script and you know they don't care at all. I mean, you just feel absolutely terrible. Um, but it's, it's just as bad as um, if nothing went wrong with, the, with the, the product service information, but then it turns out that the, uh, the CEO is funding uh, you know, something, something terrible or that uh, the, be, the, the behavior of the company for their employees is terrible. There was you know, the, the, uh, the, the Me Too movement uh, talked about this a lot where this is a culture that's uh, counter what the, the, the clients actually want. When they find that the, the guiding principle is not actually guiding all the behavior inside of the company, like literally at, at, every, at every level, you feel betrayed. So you as an entrepreneur, you have to choose a guiding principle. You have to choose it because it, uh, it's, it transcends everything else. It's, it'll show up in your, in your value, it'll show up in your, in your reputation because as your company acts, as you act, you'll always have this in mind. I, I'm trying to achieve this goal, this is what I, um, and this will affect all the decisions I make. Look, yeah, there's so much to say about that, but- uh, How transparent do I have to be? Do I have to let people know how much money is in my bank account? Do I have to let them know that I want to uh, take my girlfriend tomorrow? Absolutely not. You need to be transparent enough that people can pr predict what you might do under good and bad circumstances. So you start off small and people will, will you, have, you have to be you know, full transparent from the beginning. People will let you know that they wouldn't know this information. You'll, you'll see as you actually talk to people, either yourself or people who work for you, um, in order to gain reputation and to find out problems and, uh, so that you, you can increase your value, solve the problem a little bit better, you'll actually find out what are, pe what are people are going to ask you questions about how you're actually functioning. Now, a public company that's trading on the, the stock market, they have no choice but to be at least have all their accounting public. Um, but uh, as a private company, as a private entrepreneur, I'm not saying you have to have your, your, your books laid out to everybody. But... Maybe issue a, uh, a monthly or a quarterly um, uh, press release or a statement on your website that gives, okay, this is, um, uh, this is what we did for this quarter. This is the good stuff we did. This is the bad stuff we did. And this is what we're going to change in order to make it better. And you re reiterate where your guiding principle is. Uh, plenty of, of companies, uh, plenty of entrepreneurs do behind the scenes stuff, right? They'll shoot, they'll take behind the scene pictures and pictures of their staff and, um, uh, uh, you know, on what they're doing to set up or, or uh, an event or to create a particular product. And they'll put that online, warts and all, so that you can see what's happening behind. Because people can sort of extrapolate what a guiding principle is based on what you're doing. You don't have to be like so explicit that our guiding principle is this. But people will let you know what it is they want to know from you.